1 Peter chapter number 1 and verses 15 and 16. As this evening we will be beginning a five-part series on living the best life. And we will look at some characteristics that make up the best life that you can live as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the first one we're going to look at this evening is a holy life. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 15 and 16. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. We see here in our text that we are commanded here to be and to lead a holy life. How do we do that? Well, the best way that we can find out how to do that is to be able to look at what the word holy means in verses 15 and 16. And the word holy there is the word hagios or hagios in the Greek. And that word means sacred, physically pure, morally blameless or religious, ceremonially consecrated. Now the same Greek word appears in all the mentions of holy in verse 15 and 16. It's the exact same word. It's not a variation of the original Greek word. And to be sacred, that word is defined as someone or something devoted or dedicated to a deity or some religious person, purpose, someone who is consecrated or entitled to veneration or religious respect by association with divinity or divine things, something holy. Now the Bible teaches us, and we know that God is holy. We worship a holy God. In fact, in Isaiah, the angels cried, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The earth is full of his glory. In Isaiah chapter 6 and in verse number 3, as Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up. We also find in the book of the Revelation that our God is described as a holy God. Revelation chapter 3 and verse number 7. The letter to the church in Philadelphia. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. In the next chapter, in Revelation chapter 4, and in verse number 8, The four beasts had each of them six wings about, them, about him. And they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. In Revelation chapter 6 and in verse number 10.
those that were slain for the word of God and the testimony of Christ cried unto the Lord, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwelt on the earth? Our God is described as a holy God. He is a pure God. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5 that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Our God has no sin. Our God cannot sin. Our God doesn't have the nature of sin. Praise God. Neither does His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son. He is pure and holy. He has no sin. He is light. I am the light of the world. God has called us and saved us to be a people who are holy. Again, in 1 Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 2, and in verse number 9. But ye are to chosen generation a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Again, a couple chapters over in 1 Peter chapter 5. And verse number 10. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. One day we'll go home to be with the Lord and we will be perfect, complete, entire, wanting nothing. But we can live that way while we're here. By the grace of God that he has saved us with, we can live a life, not a perfect life, no. Not a sinless life, no. We can't do that because we have a nature of sin. But we can live a pure life. We can live a morally blameless life. We can live a life of faith. A life of faith is a holy life. With faith in a holy God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 29 that we are called to be like Jesus Christ, God's Son. God has predetermined that He would save us and He would conform us to the image of His Son. And that is the goal of our life as believers in Christ. To be like Jesus. To be like Jesus, all I ask. To be like him. All through life's journey. From earth to glory. All I ask. Is to be like him. We are to be like Christ. Our savior. Our example. Of faith. Can we be exactly like Christ? Not here. Again it's that sinful nature thing. It just gets in the way. But I can be more like Christ today or tomorrow than I am today. More like Christ today than I was yesterday. Each day I can conform my life to be more like Jesus. That can lead me to be pure and blameless. Be holy.
We are partakers of the divine nature that allows us to be holy. Over in 2 Peter chapter 1 and in verse number 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. The great and precious promises of the word of God. By these great and precious promises, we are partakers of the divine nature. as the Holy Spirit lives in us. That's the part of the divine nature God has given us. The Holy Spirit resides in our heart and life as believers in Christ. And if we are filled with that Holy Spirit, if we are controlled by that Holy Spirit, if we let the Holy Spirit lead and guide our life, we'll be more like Christ. We'll be more holy. And the Bible promises us that if we walk in the Spirit, in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And Satan throws the lust of the flesh at us all the time. There's a pie in my freezer right now. It speaks to me. It's made of chocolate. Its crust is made of chocolate. Its filling is made of chocolate. It's one of the best pies Marie Callender ever made when they had restaurants. And that's still not bad, even in the frozen state. <laughs> I don't know if I have that many. I will try, though. I'll have to cut them thin. We can all get a little bit. But Satan tempts us every day. But because we have the Holy Spirit of God, we can submit ourselves unto God, we can resist the devil, and he will flee from us. Because we've submitted ourselves unto God. We can resist temptation because the Lord gives us a way to escape temptation that we may be able to bear the temptation that we go through in our life. When temptation comes, we don't have to give in to it. We choose to give in to it. And James and James chapter 1 tells us that when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. God's grace God's grace calling a sinner is a powerful invitation to holiness. It's a great favor to be called by divine grace out of sin and misery into a life that is full of blessing for the new convert. It's good for us to be called by a holy God. Called out of sin. Called unto Christ. Called to salvation and eternal life. Called to become a new creature. Where old things are passed away and all things are become new. Great blessings are a strong incentive for us who have trusted Christ as our Savior to live a holy life. The blessings of salvation enable us as well as obligate us to be holy. 
God requires of his children complete holiness. Our text reads in verse 15, it says there, but, at, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. That word conversation means our lifestyle, how we live. In every aspect of our life, we are to be holy. In our spiritual life, at work, at home, at the store, wherever we go, and whatever we do. We are to lead a holy life. We are to be holy before every person, family, friend, and foe. We are to imitate our God in His holiness, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Peter quotes Moses here in the book of Leviticus. Several times in Leviticus, Moses speaks to the nation of Israel about being holy and living a holy life. In Leviticus chapter 11 and verse number 44, let's get there. There we go. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 44. For I am the Lord your God, ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourself with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Our God is a holy God, and he demands us to be holy as well. And although we can't match the holiness of God, we are to imitate and reflect the holiness of God to other people. God is perfectly and unchangeably and eternally holy, and we should aspire to live in such a state, a state of holiness. The consideration of God's holiness should obligate us to the highest degree of holiness that we can attain. God's word is the surest rule of faith and practice in the Christian life. This we know. So by this we are commanded by God to be holy. The commands of the Old Testament are to be studied and followed by believers who live under the New Testament. Like some preachers, we need the Old Testament. Some preachers say we don't, but we do. We can't neglect the Old Testament. And Peter, by virtue of the command given, by, given to Moses by God, he requires, God requires holiness in every Christian, in every believer in Christ. We are to live a holy life. A life that is pure. A life that is blameless. A life that is separated. We'll get more into that next week. A life that is consecrated unto God. So are you living a holy life? Are you living a life apart from the world, a life that is sacred? Are you living a life that is pure and blameless? James tells us in the book of James, in James chapter 1 and verse 27. Let 
giving us two characteristics of what pure religion or pure faith is. James chapter 1 and verse 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. We are to have compassion on others, especially those who are orphans and widows. In this verse, it says that we should do that. And we are to be unspotted from the world, unspotted from sin, washed pure and clean. A regular basis that should be in our life as believers. Because I'm sure I did something that offended God today. Maybe not realizing I'd done it. So I must ask God to forgive me for it. Are you living a life of faith? A life devoted and dedicated to the Lord and His will? I hope that you are and looking to make it better as you go through each day. As God's saints, let's live a life that is holy. And we can do so by the grace of God that he gives us. Part of having the best life is to be able to live a holy life.